Hey guys, so here's a little update on where I am with these with this uh, antique chair. Um, so this upright here has had the front section completely replaced by hardwood, and I've marked out where the mortises go um, for the cross pieces. However, this is a fairly complicated mortise to uh, to make because it's not just a parallel uh, mortise, it's actually um, vertical to the surface at the front face but then the back face is at an angle of about 10 or 15 degrees so essentially the bottom of the mortise is about 2 millimeters wide and the top is around 5 millimeters wide um, and so I didn't have any way of doing that um, because I didn't have a chisel small enough that would do this type of activity until today. So this arrived in the mail uh, today and this is basically a, a 1 8 inch or a 3 mil chisel. So I'm going to do some dry runs with this um, just to make sure that my theory is going to work out in practice. Um, and yeah, so I'll either route a very thin slot so I get the front vertical face correct and then chisel out the rest or we'll do something else we'll see so that's basically this upright I've sort of reassembled all the scroll um, and anywhere where there was really either wood missing or just the gaps were too large I just completely drilled it out and put it hardwood so it's wood to wood contact everywhere and so it should hold and I put it back together so let's have a look at the other side frame so for the other side frame um, the first challenge I guess is really not the side frame but the uh, the back cross piece because the tenons completely smashed off um, and so what I've done is I've prepared a hardwood tenon here which fits nicely in this uh, mortise um, and I will then recess the uh, surface along here uh, so I can insert this tenon into it. Um, I have to figure out a way of doing a jig for it because as you can see um, the tenon itself does not come straight out. It's not in line with the center of the wood. It's off at an angle and so uh, I'll have to figure out a way of doing jigging something up so I can cut this slot like that on the other side. And for the rest, I've decided first of all I'll see if I can recover this piece. Initially I was just going to like saw it off here and completely replace the rest. Um, but having reflected on it and thought about it, um, the reality is in both cases, for both uprights, the damage visible from the outside is very very minimal. And uh, most of the damage, as you'd expect, is at the back or on the inside, which won't be quite so visible when it's all back together. So I thought I'll see about getting all this back together, um, which is not done yet. I mean, I have the basics, but there's a chunk of wood missing here. So I'm going to, again, do a similar sort of drill out and fill so I have proper wood to wood here. And then I'm going to have a see about repeating the process I did on the other one. In other words, to route out and get rid of all this wood up to the top about halfway back, about halfway deep, uh, and then see where we go. Because I think it will take away a huge piece of this crack, which in any case is closed, and I might dowel it anyway, whatever is left, just to be safe. Um, and then we'll see how that goes. Um, yeah, so, long slow process on this one. Um, so we shall uh, we'll see how we go. Uh, this is just to show you what I mean about the tenon being tapered. So you can see it comes off the back surface uh, as straight effectively in line with the back surface, but the front of the tenon is, is tapered. So when you sit it in the uh, mortise, um, it basically the back, the back surface of the tenon is angled in but the front surface is pretty much flat to allow a bit more material to be available here at the front so that's the challenge um, so I have to repeat as I say this sort of slotted variable depth 
uh, mortis. Right, update on current state of the chair. So, uh, most of the structural woodwork is done at this point. I uh, have one last task, and it's a major one. We'll talk about that in a minute. Um, so, on both uprights here, I've replaced uh, all the destroyed wood. Uh, same on this side. There was more damage here than on the other one. I've rebuilt the scrolls top and either side. Um, this one unfortunately had wood that was so either missing or so badly flaked. I had to plug it with a, um, uh, a hardwood dowel section and then trim it off and I'll stain it up later. Uh, this by the way I may have said earlier it was maple. It's actually beech. Uh, steamed beech. And I guess they steam it um, mainly to get the colour more uniform and, and so the pinkish colour goes away after a while anyway um, and I think also to uh, make it a bit more stable is the other reason they uh, steam it um, but it's very hard wood often used for workbenches and benches and stuff so uh, should do the trick nicely um, <coughs> so yes then this tenon was snapped off here so uh, and of course there are no right angles anywhere on this chair, so um, I basically made a, um, a tenon which uh, goes into the mortise here and then I cut a slot underneath here to uh, take it into the cross piece. Um, so that's all done. Uh, then this front joint, this front up right here was uh, cracked and broken in numerous places. That's all put back together. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. I think it's now sort of solid and square and fits on the ground without moving around. Um, <clears throat> it's not glued yet, it's just dry fit obviously because the uh, really big important bits are um, fitting the uh, mortises um, which will go here. So I've, you probably can't see on the video but I've marked out the mortises on this side and I'll carry them across uh, so they're nice and horizontal onto the upright. Now the challenge with those mortises is they're very thin, very small. So I've been struggling a little bit with what to do in terms of cutting them because they're, as I said, they're right angle on one side and then there's about a 10 degree slope on the other. Um, I've tried various uh, goes at it manually but with that wood being so hard it is painful stuff. Um, so I'm going to I'm gonna take, uh, see if I can adopt a loot 3 approach and I'm, so I need to jig, make a jig um, so I can do those slots otherwise it just take forever so may as well spend the time building a jig um, or I might be able to use one that I've used on guitar work in the past, we'll see, It'll be the subject of another update. So, there we go, getting there. It's by no means a commercially viable proposition. You could make a chair from scratch the amount of time this has taken. Um, still, we get there. Um, I'd say we're, uh, once I get those four mortises cut on the two uprights, we'll be pretty much there and then we'll be down to uh, basically staining and finishing so the thing you can't see all those um, replacement pieces of uh, lumber. Oh yeah, the other the other thing that took forever is when I put this back together, this joint here, for some reason, maybe it was how I glued all the bit, different pieces of the scroll together, it just didn't fit properly at all here. I spent like a long time <laughs> filing and, and shaving away pieces here just so I could get this joint to fit. Uh, but it does all fit well now, so there we go. That's it for now. I guess uh, once I've decided how to do those mortises for the uh, cross pieces on the back, um, I'll probably have another update. So, more to come soon.